First off, God is eternal, infinite, always. He has no beginning and no end. He always was, always is, and always will be, according to the Bible. While he lasts forever, he could have been fluctuating and changing all the time, so it's a good thing for us that he's unchanging. If he's eternal and unchanging, then he's of course objective. But if he's objective, then he's also true. In fact, God is the source of truth. He is where all truth flows from in this universe. And so, if God created the universe, and all the things in it, then he is omnipotent, all-powerful. God is also omniscient, all-knowing. Imagine you're an inventor. You want to make this machine, so you gather all the parts, all the materials, you create all the things yourself, and you put the machine together. In the same way, God invented or created the universe, so he intimately knows every single aspect of the universe, so he knows everything, he's omniscient. God, being the creator of all things and the knower of all things, is also present with everything. This is shown in the Bible, but it says he's there with everything, not that he is everything. He's just omnipresent. God is omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. There's nothing above him in all the universe, so therefore he is sovereign over the universe. So we've established that God is sovereign over the universe. There's nothing in the universe that's more powerful than him, nothing above him, nothing that can add to him or take away from him. So he's self-sufficient. And if God is the sovereign ruler of this universe and also omnipotent and the source of truth, then that just means that he's righteous as well, or you could say just. He is perfectly capable of giving everyone exactly what they deserve. Truth is often associated with goodness, and since God is the source of all truth in the universe, then he is the source of all goodness as well. He created the universe, he decided what's good and bad, what's true and false. That means that all of God's actions by his very nature are good, including the flood of Noah's time. And since God is good, and only good, since he's also true and unchanging, that means that he is wholly separate from evil, or holy. Surprisingly, God is also jealous, but it's different than what you think. When we say we're jealous, we're envious of someone else because we want something they have. But we've already established God is self-sufficient, he needs nothing, so that doesn't make any sense. But when God is talking about being jealous, he's talking about idol worship. People are giving to other things, idols, the worship that God rightfully deserves as being creator of the universe. God is also wise. You can think of wisdom as common sense or good judgment, the ability to pick between right and wrong. And since God is the source of all right, then obviously he's wise, he knows exactly what to do. So since God is the creator of the universe and all powerful and all knowing, then well, it would be a really bad thing if he was bad, right? But it's a good thing that he's good. There is though some bad news wrapped up in all this goodness because God is a source of good, but that means that everything else in the universe isn't good. We don't reach that same level because we're not God. All of us are bad. So it's really good news that God is loving. His love is important, but it's included in the larger attribute of graciousness or grace. It's important to know that justice is getting what you deserve. Mercy is not getting what you deserve or being spared what you really deserve and grace is getting something even though you don't deserve it. And that's the great news of the gospel. Through grace, we get what we don't deserve. We're evil, but God gives us eternal life because he sacrifices, he loves us. God loves us, but he's also perfectly just and perfectly good, and therefore all evil in the world can't go unpunished. But it would be unfair to punish one person for the sins of everyone else, so that's why it's important that God came down to earth as the form of a man in Jesus Christ and took that punishment on himself. The acceptance of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is what we call the gospel, and we can see in the Bible that God is described as being faithful, which means that if we accept that, he will not let us down. And though God died to atone for everyone's sins, he knows that not everyone is going to choose to accept that gift that he offers to everyone. So. He's being patient and waiting for everyone who will choose him to do so, and then he'll finally implement justice at the end. That's what we call the final judgment in Revelation.